All right, brilliant. So welcome, Robin, and congratulations. So you've just completed the Transformational Life Coach Diploma. So many congratulations through the Soul Awakening Academy. Thank you. So you, it's been a journey for you because you were juggling life, weren't you? So you just explained yeah. then. So you're doing your PhD currently whilst uh, going through your studies with the Soul Awakening Academy. So well done. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank <laughs> you. So I've got you on today, really, just so you can share your journey, let people know all the good work that you're doing, how they can contact you, what type of client you can help make a transformation. And just really from, you know, people kind of look just to see what it's like to work, to, to go through the Soul Awakening Academy and become an accredited coach. So I'm just going to ask you some questions that will give some insight to those people who are potentially thinking about becoming a student of the Academy. So first question is, what was your life before? Because it's you first joined us about two years ago. I think about two years ago when I started with the spiritual life yeah. um, introduction. Right. That's right. Yeah. So you, you journeyed up with us, didn't you? I did. OK, yeah. so you took the introduction course. So that, that's actually a great point. So people who are not sure and they just want to dip their toe in the water, very inexpensive, introductory course and it'll just give you a bit of an insight into what we do really and what spiritual coaching is about so then you progressed on to the bigger course the transformational life coaching. I did the spiritual empowerment course in the middle of that as well did you oh yeah, wow okay <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> oh my god so you are a well qualified girl <laughs> I couldn't stop I'm, just, I'm like a sponge <laughs> Yeah, ditto, ditto. Oh, okay, so that's cool. So you've really tackled it from both angles. So well mm. done then. So tell me what life was like before. Why were you seeking out this type of course? Well, um, I was living quite a highly stressful life. I was quite manic. I didn't know what I was doing, so sort of like one minute to the next. Um, I had all these ideas going around in my head. I didn't really know how to set goals. I didn't really think about what goals were at that point. Um, but I knew that I had a lot of healing to get through. I was repeating similar situations over and over again. And it's taken me about 10, 12 years, you know, to try and really figure out what was going on. Um, and I knew it was, I had to do something different, really. Yeah. And what, why were you drawn to like the spiritual aspect of things? Um, I guess you could say I've always been quite spiritually involved. I just think there's more to life than just going from day to day. And, you know, I'm a quite a firm believer in that we're not just a human, we're sort of a, a, a living soul in a human body. Yeah, yeah. And it's just our vehicle. Yeah. And have you found coaching has helped you personally with stuff that you were going through in your life? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I can't recommend how much of a transformation I've had. Um, I've gone from sort of feeling despair and fear, yeah. a lot of self-doubt um, and how that sort of affected me day to day um, with self-discovery and spiritual aspects. And I felt that the coaching helped me uncover why I was feeling this way and how to move forward and break down those barriers. Wow, that's amazing. So what difference in yourself like is there anything tangible that you could say okay so for instance well at one point I wasn't getting out of bed and then the transformation was I was getting out of bed and I was doing xyz what physically can you explain to us as can you notice the difference between then and now yeah so a couple of well, it was probably just at the start of the um transformation course I actually had a mental breakdown at work um, I was working for the NHS at the time um, and I ended up being off sick for two, three months. I can't quite remember now. And I, just, as you say, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't see through the trees. I was blaming myself for everything that was going on. I was get, I had a complaint. It was probably not such a big deal. It was just to say, why are you laughing at a joke when a patient had told me a joke and silly little things like that. It doesn't seem like a big deal to you and me, but to me at the time. then it was. <laughs> um, and after working through some of the course materials, I mean, it was a bit of a struggle to go, actually, I need to start looking at this. I'm yeah. doing it. I can't just push it to the side. Um, I started to realize 
actually why I might be feeling that way and how to break down down those sort of barriers and I ended up going back to work eventually um, and I could when I was faced with these problems again I could actually change my mindset and it didn't affect me in the same way. Wow that's so cool Robin that's I won't swear I normally swear but I won't <laughs> <That's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard me off camera <laughs> people hear me on camera which is so unladylike but that is amazing so for anybody watching this who feels the way that you felt just explain the way that you felt because they're, they're your audience basically I was feeling downtrodden I felt like I wasn't worthy of serving me my patients basically I felt like I didn't care or I couldn't care for them the way that I should do or what the world perceived that I should um I, I mean that's just one example I mean there's been other times where I blamed myself for something that's happened in the past another one that came up for me was um feeling alone as a child um my parents divorced when I was quite young uh, one was always there but the other one ended up in a relationship with a violent alcoholic and the story plays on um and it's got I got to about 16 17 and I was really troubled inside and um it came down to I felt abandoned as a child um so that's another example of how I felt absolutely and I mean that's one of the biggest things that we work on with our clients is the unconscious patterns that we that we carry on through we pick up or we play out as children right the way through to our adult life we're not consciously aware of it but those subconscious beliefs and the filters, the way we see the world, they drive our behaviours, our values, our attitudes, and they affect every aspect of our life. It's, it's mind-blowing. They affect the, our eating habits. They affect our levels of intimacy, our vulnerability, the, the way we can experience or not experience joy and bliss, the way we are with our family and friends, you know, all every aspect of our life gets affected by our unconscious behaviors. So it's only when we go back into those to unravel them, to heal them, to work through them, can we then move ourselves forward. And if we don't, it affects our it affects our health. You know, you said you you went from being somebody who was at work. What did what did you do, by the way? You said you had patients. So uh, I'm a radiographer by trade. Yeah. So you went from being a radiographer to feeling complete overwhelmed to not being able to work. And physically, did that present any physical ailments in you? Any chronic fatigue? or? Um, you could say chronic fatigue. Um, I wasn't sleeping at night. I wasn't sleeping in the day. I was basically a walking zombie. I was suffering migraines with auras. Um, yeah, it wasn't very nice. <laughs> it's no. that yeah. isolation, I think, would be the word to describe it. So your physical health got affected and your emotional health as well. Mm. So just touching on the physical health, have those symptoms subsided now? You've done the work on yourself. Definitely. I mean, occasionally I'll get headaches, but I think that's probably not drinking enough or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That so we can put it down to, well, yeah. we occasionally do get headaches. And it can exactly. Be it's not, not water or sleep or too much time on the computer. That's so cool. Your story is so powerful, Robin. Um, just going through these questions that and I think we've <laughs> yeah. answered them all. I mean, what would you say has been the biggest change in your life as a result of taking the course and doing the work on yourself more than anything? Um, that's tricky. <laughs> I have to think about that. I, I mean, apart from, you know, I'm much more level headed. I start to question things as they happen and then I can sort of change the course that it's, I'm going to take the course of sort of where the event's going. Um, but I suppose the other biggest takeaway is that, you know, I've started setting myself personal goals, um, also sort of business goals, career goals, just a goal and everything, not just daily, but weekly. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, because as, as we explained earlier, you ha you're a lady with a lot on your plate. Yeah. And you've gone from being completely overwhelmed, not being able to work or function to being physically affected by all this emotional overload to now be you've completed the course you're an excellent coach oh thank you're, you you're working with people you're coaching people and you're also going through your PhD as well 
So you've gone from not being able to manage to managing a lot. So you're obviously Definitely. excellent at mindset work, goal setting, future paced uh, goals as well, mm -hmm. and managing that for yourself. So that's one of the biggest skills. And I say to everybody who comes on the course, you have to, you know, walk the talk, basically. It's not a tick box exercise. The coach is not just, okay, this is how you do it and just tick a box and say you've done it. This is like, no, you have to now do this in your life because your client is going to look at you and look at your story and they want to know, has this lady walked in my shoes? Can she really help me? When I'm with her, will she really see me? Will she really get me? And will she be able to help me? And the answer is yes, because you've proved it to everybody, to yourself, mm -hmm. that you now have this skill set that you use invaluably for your own life. And you can share that knowledge with other people now. So I am so um, amazed mm -hmm. at people like yourself who pull themselves up and go forward with because we can just stay where we are it takes so much effort and courage to pull ourselves out of a dark mm. place I've experienced it it's myself mm. and it's seriously hard seriously hard so well done for doing it and you are going to be a beacon and a guide for mm. other people now so well done so tell people what you're doing, who you want to work with and where they can find you. OK, so um, I've started my online um, sanctuary, if you like. Um, it's a place where you can find self-healing, self-discovery and transformational sessions uh, in the form of holistic healing like Reiki um, and past life work, but also with the coaching sessions as well. Um, I also do meditation as well to help people um, and it's just to basically to help you forward on your self-discovery and self-healing journey um, and hopefully you'll feel supported and nurtured along the way. Um, I tend to work, I don't have a specific criteria with who I work with, it's just whether it feels right for both of us. Yeah. Um, it's usually people that are feeling the way I did, but also those who are maybe not sure where they are on their spiritual path and want to move forward with their spiritual awakening as well. Um, I do, sorry. No, go ahead, carry on. Um, I'm, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, you can find my services on, on Facebook, on my Facebook page, which is Crystal Stream Healing. Um, but I've also got a website as well, which is crystalstreamhealing.co.uk. Great. And we'll post those links as well in the bio. So what would you say to people who are thinking about taking a course with the Soul Awakening Academy? What advice would you give them? Um, I, I think my best piece of advice is if you're sitting on the fence, just just do it and take that chance. Um, it will change your life around um, just like it did mine. Um, you're not going to regret it. It builds on your foundations. Um, it gives you the foundations of the coaching right from the bottom all the way up and you'll get that greater understanding of yourself and the world around you. And yeah. so, yeah. Excellent, Robin. Thank you so much for your time today. So we will share this to the hilt <laughs> and get people um, to know about the amazing work that you can do for them to transform their life. Well done, Robin. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.